So we back with another video. Today we got y'all boys with another NFL video. Today we will be going over the NFL defenses. Now, with the NFL defenses, we did go over the NFL offenses. We gave y'all our midseason predictions. If y'all haven't seen that, make sure to like those videos. Now, today we're going to be getting back into doing it tiers. We're not going to rank them in order or nothing like that. So if you do want me to rank them in order, y'all want me to rank them in tiers, y'all got to let me know in the comments down below which ones y'all prefer. But if y'all do want more of these weekly power rankings videos make sure to like the video make sure to subscribe further ado though let's hop into it let's hopping into it don't want to waste no time power rankings if you don't know how power rankings work in my opinion from what I, my knowledge power rankings is pretty much up to that point we're not going to be predicting what we think is going to happen to the future we're just going to be saying pretty much who's the best Defense in the league right now today based off the things that we've seen in the Weeks that's been played and With that being said if teams are injured that is going to factor how we look at them um, Simple now best you already know that's gonna be the best defense in the league elite Those are the elite defenses in the league playoff playoff caliber defenses defenses that can get the job done in the playoffs sneaky Pretty much, in my opinion, the Sneaky is a defense that week in, week out, either they have an injury or two that's keeping them away from being higher, or there's a team that's just not consistent enough to be playoff or elite, but they, I can see them going against like an elite offense and or elite or playoff caliber offense, and they actually get the job done. But at the same time, a mid or trash def or offense can get a job done on them. It's like they just not consistent. Like game by game, they'll have a good game, then they'll have a bad game. Then a good game, then they'll have a bad game. So that's just kind of what I would say for sneaky. Mid is just mid, trash is trash. Let's hop into it. The Baltimore Ravens defense wise, I don't even know if I can say it's playoff caliber. I will say the Steelers game defensively, I don't think that was a problem. I would say that they had like about seven actual real scoring opportunities. So I think that was just a case of bend but don't break and it really working in the favor of the Ravens. But that was kind of a playoff atmosphere where the Ravens, again, couldn't get the job done. I'm going to be honest, Ravens, if teams are holding y'all down to 15 points in the playoffs, y'all are not winning a ring this year. It just is what it is. They holding y'all down to that. It is. Now, with that being said, the Ravens, I feel like the defense did a good enough job against the Steelers. But weeks prior, you look at the Bengals game, they have not... Defended the Bengals well. Lamar just had MVP caliber games in those games. But you got to also think about the fact that the Bengals defense is bad. But we just talking about defense. I would just say right now, I'm going to say the Ravens is sneaky. I feel like I've been really leaning on them. And it's really weird because Kyle Hamilton was good when he was playing. But now he's hurt. So that's another issue. Um, they have a lot of underrated guys on the D-line. Um... Marlon Humphrey's been pretty good, but their, their pass defense is terrible. Roquan Smith has been good, but I don't know. It's like they have a lot of good guys, but they're just not doing it on the field week in, week out. So I'm going to put them sneaky for now. I, until we see them be consistent, I don't know if I can put them playoff caliber, personally. Um, the Browns, the Browns have not been that consistent, but I feel like their offense has not been good. But as their offense has gotten better, their defense has been a little bit weird, too. Because since Jameis has became the quarterback the last three weeks, now he did have a game where he had three picks. But outside of that one game, to be real, the Browns' defense the last game wasn't just locking. Um, they played against the Saints, and the Saints put up a lot of points on them. Chargers put up a lot of points on them. I don't even know what to say about the, the Browns' defense at this point. I guess mid wouldn't even be the right word for it. I'm going to just say, or not mid. I don't know if playoff would be the right word for it or playoff caliber. I'm going to say mid. I'm going to say mid. I don't think they're of the same caliber as what they were last year. I'm going to just say mid. I'm looking at the score sheets. Pretty much teams have been putting up 20 all year except for one game, and that was against the Jaguars, and you can do with that what you will. But I don't know. It's been a really weird year for the Browns. They may even be a sneaky. I'm going to put them sneaky, but I'm going to actually put them over the Ravens because I low key do respect them a little bit more. But on paper, I don't know if they're actually been better, to be honest, or statistically. But I feel like I, I would be less threatened against the Ravens 
than I would be against the Browns in the playoffs. I feel like the Ravens' offense just makes the, that team just much better than the Browns. The Patriots, as a Patriots fan, I'm going to be honest. Um, week in, week out, I watch the Patriots. I'm going to be real. If I would have did this after the Bears game, I would have been here on a cloud high because I would have been like, man, if we could play Caleb Williams every week, I, I is be honest, that might just be a special offense or a special defense. But no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what it was, bro. Every third down when the Patriots played the, uh, the Bears, they blitzed and man. If you can play blitz and man against the Bears, you're more than likely going to get a sack. It's just it what it is. Now, the thing that the Packers messed up on that the Patriots did, we blitzed and every single time we had a spy. And what was Caleb doing against that against the Packers? He was running on that a lot. Um, and that was kind of the main issue to why he was so successful against the Packers in that game. Now, I've seen that happen against the Texans. I've seen that happen against the Colts. I've seen that happen against a couple teams now. Um, so I'm not going to get the Patriots fully credit for that because that's just what you're supposed to do against the quarterback right now. It just is what it is. So getting all them sacks, allowing only three points, that's not really that impressive in the real thing. They also got a new coach now, or that scheme, I said this going into the season, that Scheme was going to be awful. They were going to try to run a two tight end set offense with a quarterback that's slow to read the field and with a team that has three wide receivers without really a real second tight end that's better than the third wide receiver. So it just doesn't make sense. And they should run the ball more. And, yeah, that was that. Now, outside of that game, the Patriots, in my opinion, defensively, I will say the offense has been an issue, but with Drake May, the offense has not been as much of an issue. Um, 20 points to the Titans, 22 points to the Jets. Now, I'm not going to lie. The 22 to the Jets, don't not that crazy. 32 to the Jacksonville Jaguars, that's pretty wild. 41 to the Texans, that's pretty wild. And if you watch that Rams, the way that they scored those points is just egregious. Like, the way that we play defense is, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm going to put a mid. I don't know if I can say trash because... At the end of the day, even with Drake May, the offense isn't really good. It's just a sneaky offense, I would say. It's just the defense. Outside Gonzo, the pass coverage is bad. And sometimes Jonathan Jones is good, but outside Gonzo, the pass coverage is bad. And that's really more so because of injuries. When it comes to the the D-line, I do think Christian Barmore is going to be a big help in terms of stopping the run. But our run defense isn't that good. Is still one of the worst in the league, in my opinion, watching them. And we don't really have a good pass rush at all, especially in terms of consistency. So I say all that to say, I'm going to say the Patriots are going to be mid. Then we have the Saints. I'm going to be honest, Saints, man, y'all may be trash defensively. Being honest, y'all just might be trash. Being honest. But since y'all fired y'all coach, y'all have gotten better. So, man, I don't know. Like I said, Saints, man, I think I said this last week. Maybe they just need to restart every four weeks where, like, that first two weeks, y'all get a fresh start. Y'all just be really good. Now I want to see what y'all look after these two weeks because the first two weeks of the season, y'all was really dominant both sides of the football. Y'all look really good on both sides of the football again, especially this past week. So, I'm going to say... Y'all have a bye week this week, so we ain't going to be able to gauge it too much. But in the totality of the season, I guess I'm going to say sneaky. But y'all did lose a lot of guys. Y'all traded Marshawn Lattimore. I'm going to say mid. And I'm going to put the Patriots right there with them. The Titans. Now, the Titans is another team that's really tough to rank because their offense. I really don't know how, how bad of a defense this is because the offense does not get off the field. They just don't get off the field. They got 52 hung up on them by the Lions. They got 34 hung up on them by the Bills. But outside of those couple games, they've been pretty solid defensively. I would say the the Titans have a playoff caliber defense, in my opinion. They may be elite if they had a better offense, but right now I'm going to just say playoff. Cowboys is trash. There's not much to even say there. Um, I don't think they played that bad of a defensive game this week. They just couldn't stop the run. They couldn't stop the run last year. They couldn't stop the run the year before that. It's just gotten worse. Um, I will say the defense does look better with Micah, with, um, their DBs back, but still just not a good defense, man. I'm just, just say what it is. 
the Giants. Now the Giants is a team that honestly has a sneaky defense because you wouldn't you wouldn't see somebody say that the Giants have a really special defense. But I'm gonna be honest, the Giants actually have a really sneaky defense. Um, when it's guns to the Giants and the way that they play and the things that they want to do, um, they they gonna give their offense a really solid margin for error every single week. You know that nobody's really going to put up 30 on the Giants. Like, it's just going to be a surprise if somebody put 30 up on the Giants. Um, they've been kind of slacking a little bit the last few weeks. But in terms of the front or the pass rush, it's one of the better pass rushes in the league, in my opinion. Um, I think the secondary is kind of much to be desired. I think their linebackers are okay. I think the, the Giants, I would probably lean sneaky or playoff. Their offense is just really the issue. Um... In my opinion, more so than the defense. I feel like the offense gives the the defense they it's really just don't get off the field. Um I'm really trying to think on this one. I'm looking at it. Philly put up twenty eight, but that's a pretty solid offense. Pittsburgh with Russ has been pretty good. The commanders we've seen how consistent they've been. They had their first rough week against the Eagles, really. We've seen all year, really. And then the Panthers, Panthers just, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm going to say, and that went to overtime, so yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say they playoff caliber, honestly. I'm going to say the Giants are playoff caliber. Um, right behind the Titans. Then we got the Bears. I think the Bears are elite. I think the Bears, in terms of team, every team in the league, Bears is up there for one of the biggest margins for error that their team gives. Their team. Like, I'm sorry, but the Bears, week in, week out, when it comes to how they play, I'm sorry to tell y'all this. Y'all want to say that their co- your coach is bad, but your coach is a defensive coach. He's going to be conservative offensively because he does not believe in your offense. He does not believe in the quarterback. He does not believe in the score points. He does not believe in the kicker. He does not believe in all that. He believes in their defense week in, week out to hold the team that they're playing to 20 or less points a game. If they allow more than 20, they're most likely going to lose. How many games have they allowed more than 20, do you ask? Twice. All season, they've allowed more than 20. One of the games was 21 points to the Colts, and the defense got two picks. One was, I think, was, no, it wasn't a pick six, but they did have two picks, and I think both was in the red zone, very crucial, and they still lost that game. And the other game was against the Cardinals, and they allowed 27. Every game outside of that was 20 or less. And they still have a 4-6 and six record. That is the team, in my opinion, that gives their offense the biggest margin for error in the league. Now, there's issues that kind of holds them back from being the best defense in the league. Um, they don't really have the greatest pass rush, in my opinion. I don't think their pass rush is very consistent. I think that their secondary is becoming a little leaky the past couple of weeks. But, yeah, I think the Bears, in terms of totality, I think that coach gets a lot of that out of that defense that if you get rid of that coach... It's going a lot of them holes gonna start getting a lot more exposed in terms of the pass rush, the pass coverage, in my opinion. So yeah, I think Jalen Johnson has had a kind of rougher past two weeks, but for the most part, he's been pretty good this year. But outside of him, it's not been great, in my opinion. Especially with Jaquan Bisker being out the last couple weeks and him being out for at least a couple more weeks being on the IR, I think that could be a problem for them as well. Then when it comes to the Bills, when it comes to the Bills, man. Buffalo Bills, I think defensively, if the Bills can figure this run defense out, that is another team that is very, very interesting for how they can play coming into the playoffs because that could be really one of the more balanced teams in the league with how their defense is playing. Now, this is another team that does struggle struggle to get a pass rush consistently. This is a team that struggles more so than the Bears to stop the run. But I will say in comparison to the Bears, in comparison to the Titans, in comparison to the Giants, this team just has a much better offense than they do a defense. So it's kind of tough. Like, say, for instance, you give Sean McDermott those guys as the Giants guy, especially on that pass rush in terms of Dexter Lawrence, um, Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau. I'm thinking of the Titans front seven. Give him that. Like, McDermott is a guy that gets a lot done with less. And I think what they've done with Benford, and rap, I think they just had a really good defense this year. Um, I think especially if they can get Milano back, that's a real defense. But we're just doing power rankings at the time of today. I'm going to say the Bills. 
I'm going to say they're playoff, and I'm going to put them right in between the Titans and the Giants. Because I do still think that there is a there is a thing, there is something to be talked about in the fact that you can run the ball on them, in my opinion. So they play the 49ers. I think that's a team that's going to be very interesting matchup for them because that's what they want to do. But we'll see. The Lions. Lions is another team that really, their offense gives their defense a pretty big margin for error. And they pretty much navigate the game to go pretty much one way. So, with that being said, the Giants have been pretty solid this year, though. Much better than last year. Um, I said the same thing for the Bears. It's not really the same thing, though, where the Bears, they allow 20 or less. They're most likely, that's what the defense is really trying to do. The Lions is kind of doing something similar where they've only allowed that three times. And that's got to mean something. I think the Lions is one of the better run defenses. Um, I think that they have one of the defensive player of the year candidates with Brian Branch. Aiden Hutchinson was one of those guys, but he did get hurt. I don't know if he's going to come back this year or not. If he does, it probably would be in the playoffs. If he was here, I think we could lean elite. Without him, though, I probably would lean playoff, and I would probably put them here. But I do like what I've seen out of the Lions defensively this year. Um, the Commanders, I'm going to be honest, man. Dan Quinn is a very good defensive coach. I really don't like how teams think that just because you have an offensive-minded coach, that's just going to improve your team. That is not the case. That is not the case. Literally, the same way if you get an offensive-minded head coach and you get a defensive mastermind like the Vikings have, that can work. The same way that can work is the same way the commanders have been really good all year because they have an offensive genius on offense and Dan Quinn. Now, if that offensive genius kind of wanes down the stretch, kind of like he used to do on the Cardinals, then that's not really Dan Quinn's fault. That's just really the offensive side of the ball not holding up their end of the bargain. That's just what that is. But, yeah, I think the commanders defensively, they overperform what they really are, in my opinion. I don't think this is really that good of a defense. But I will say, the addition of Marlon Humphrey, not Marlon Humphrey, but Marshawn Lattimore was a pretty big that's a pretty big addition. And Philly didn't really put up 26 on them. That was kind of late scores, I will say that. But for the most part, I feel like the defense has got the job done. I would just say they're more so sneaky. And I would say they're one of the sneakier defenses. But I would put them behind these two. I think these two defenses are just better than the commanders, in my opinion. Um, The Packers. I think the Packers just may be an elite defense, if I'm honest. Um, I just don't really see how you could really tell me that the Packers aren't genuinely elite on defense. Um, just looking at how they play, looking at what they want to do, looking at the balance that they can play with in terms of stopping the run, stopping the pass. I think that the Packers are an elite defense. Um, but just to make sure that they're, they are elite, let's look at them when it comes to the Packers. Um, now you got to also think about it. Jay Love has had a really pro big problem this year in terms of throwing picks. That has been a problem all year for him. Um, so you got to think about the, this is a good offense, but the defense is on the field. You cannot keep that away from him. So yeah. Um, but with that being said, I think that their defense has been very good. I'm going to put them in elite. Um, I'm going to actually bring the Lions up there too. I'm bringing the Lions up to two, um, since I'm going to bring the Packers up there. Because I don't think the Lions has been a tier below, but I'm going to put them up there too. Um, the Bengals, the Bengals defense. Yeah, this is what I was saying, like, in that predictions. A lot of people want to say Trey Henderson. Like, if you look at the stats, yeah, Trey Henderson probably should be in the Defensive Player of the Year conversation. But I'm going to be honest. There's no comparison to how clutch Trey Henderson is, in my opinion, compared to T.J. White at the end of the game. From when I've watched the Bengals and when I've watched the Steelers. Um, you can really depend on T.J. Watt to make at least a play every single game in the clutch. And he just does it time and after time after time. So that's just me. That's just my opinion. Um, that's just genuinely how I feel about it. Um, the Bengals, in my opinion, if their defense was better than what they've been, they would be. this is a team that could genuinely be a much, much better team if their defense was just better. Um, and I've said this multiple times, that's – just really tough because Burrow really should be an MVP candidate, but people I'm seeing people have Mahomes over him. 
So I don't really know what's going on there. But yeah, the Jaguars. I don't think there's anyone that thinks the Jaguars have a good defense this year. Let's just let's just put the Jaguars where they belong and put them in trash. I think the Jaguars are a trash defense. Let's just keep it moving. The Texans. The Texans, in my opinion, um, in my opinion, I would say the Texans are a gimmicky def- defense. Um, when you watch them, you can kind of understand what they do. I think that there's ways that you can really exploit the defense of the Texans, but they also have stars. So, like, Petrie, I think, is a star. I think Stingley is a star. I think the DNs that they got, the pass rushes, is a star. But I think you can run the ball on the Texans. If you can navigate the game in a way where you can run the ball on the Texans, and you can make them have to play off the play action. I think this is a team that you can definitely take advantage of. This is a team that's going to just predicate their entire defense off getting pressure, seeing a lot of blitzes, and really trying to confuse the quarterback with a lot of disguise stuff. Um, now, the way that they do go about doing disguise is just different from the teams I like the way they do disguise in terms of the gimmick. That's why I say they're more so a gimmick. Like, I like the way that the Broncos, I like the way that the Vikings, I like the way that the... Even sometimes the, the I'm not gonna lie, the Texans and the Chiefs are very similar. Except I think that Spags is just his gimmicky stuff is just it works perfectly because he's such a perfect situational play call. Like it's really tough, and that's kind of real reason why the Chiefs are so good. But when it comes to the Texans, I think it's kind of tough to say that they're not been an elite defense. I'm gonna put them elite, but. It's not really, I can see that, I can see this team falling apart, but just, if we're breaking it off so far this season, I'm going to put them elite. The Chiefs, if you don't know now why they were undefeated, it's because of their defense. As soon as their defense just could not hold somebody to a certain amount of points, they lost. And that's just what it is. Um, I would have to say the Chiefs are elite defensively. I don't really think it's really even debatable. Are they as good as last year, in my opinion? No, I don't think the pass rush is as explosive as it was last year. I don't think the secondary is as locked down as last year. I don't even know if, like, I think in the run game, they're better. Run defense, I think Chris Jones has been arguably one of his best seasons ever. And I think in the run game, they've been better. But the pass defense must be desired. So, I think that's something that could be an issue for them. I'm looking at their schedule down the stretch, though, man. Are these teams going to be able to exploit that? They play the Carolina Panthers next. After that, they play the Raiders. As they did play the Chargers, whose offense has been getting it going. So that's going to be a very interesting game. Because if you remember early in the season, they beat the Chargers 17-10. And the Chargers were up in that game 10-0 early. So that's an interesting one. Then they play the Cleveland Browns. Then they play the Texans, who I guess will be the other team that's been, you could say. But then they play the Steelers. That's the team that's been getting it going late. I guess this Chargers and own, you can kind of say Chargers, the Browns, the Texans, the Steelers. But let's be honest. Let's be honest. It's really only the Chargers that I would. And I don't even know if you can really say the Chargers have an elite a passing attack. So really none of these teams I would say have an elite a passing attack that you can really say are going to be able to take advantage of really what's been the issue with them. Um. So, yeah, that's just me. So, I'm going to say they're elite, but we'll see. We'll see if they look in different in the light when they got to play certain teams in the playoffs. But I ain't going to lie. Is Burrow going to make the playoffs? I don't know if they are. I'm going to be honest. So, we'll see. It's, uh, Lamar has his problems in the playoffs. Josh Allen, we'll see what he, they look like. They have their, they have the Bills number in the playoffs. I know that they beat them this year, but they they usually beat them in the regular season. Will they beat them in the playoffs? We'll see. Um, I think the Chiefs have... they. They, they, they have enough to get the job done on defense again this year if the offense can be better than it was last year. I don't think the defense has to be as good as it was last year. I think the defense can just be really, really good, like it's been this year, and the offense be slightly better than last year, and they can get the job done again. Um, the Cardinals. The Cardinals is the epitome of a sneaky defense or a team as a whole, but I'm going to be honest. I think they're 6-4. and four. At what point does a team stop being sneaky? Like, at what point does a team just become good? Last game they played, six points to the Jets. The game before that, nine points to the uh, Bears. 27 to the uh, Dolphins, but I think that was the first game Reef was uh, was back, so I don't know how much you can blame them for that. Um, 15 to the Chargers, 34 to the... uh, I mean, the team that they allowed a lot of points to, the Packers, first four weeks of the season, Commanders, 34 to the Bills. First First game of the season, they were up in that game. So, I'm going to actually say that the Cardinals have been a playoff caliber defense. 
I think they've been a playoff caliber defense. I'm going to just say we're going to stop with the gimmicks of saying they sneaky. They're just a good defense. And, yes, by the way, there are more good defenses in the NFL than there are good offenses. It just is what it is. Um, the Dolphins, I'm going to be honest, man. The Dolphins, I don't know what to think of them because – Start the year, I don't. I didn't think they were that good defensively. I don't think they're still that consistent of a defense. But um, I think they're. I think they playoff caliber. I'm looking. I'm just they haven't allowed a team to. Man, they allowed 29 to the Titans though. That's where it really. That's the epitome of sneaky. That's the epitome of sneaky. 15 to the Rams with Puka and Cup, but 29 to the Titans. That's the epitome of sneaky. Now, it had to be somebody was pivotal that was injured in that game or something, man. Because that's crazy. That's genuinely crazy. I can't really even imagine how that even happened. I'm going to say... I'm going to say sneaky and put them there. Because the consistency just isn't there. But, yeah. Um... And we got the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers is just not a good defense. I'm sorry. Whoever needs to hear it, the Buccaneers are not a good defense. It just it just is what it is. The Buccaneers are not good defensively. Um, and that's pretty much just what it is. I'm going to put them in trash. I would put them at the lowest. Let's keep it moving. I don't even think that needs to even be described. Let's keep it going. The Raiders... Raiders, honestly, they've been about as talented as they are on defense. That's about how they played. I think they're mid. Um, I think they're mid, honestly. I feel like the 34 points that it says the Dolphins had, that's that wasn't really the outcome of that game, honestly. It was a lot closer than what that score says. But, yeah, I would say they're mid. They're not good. They're not terrible. They're mid. Um, the Jets. Um, now this is a tough one because I can say sneaky because pre-firing Salah and after after firing Salah, they're one of the worst defenses in the league. Pre-firing Salah, they were a playoff elite caliber defense. I don't really know what y'all want me to do with this one. The Jets is just I don't know, man. I don't really know what's going on. I feel like the GM got fired because of the head coach getting fired. That just made no sense to me, honestly. Like, that made no sense. And the one game that they won was against the Texans, and they got eight sacks that game and only allowed 13. They lost to the Patriots, and that was a game Drake May got hurt. That offense, as a Patriots fan, that is a completely different level of offense when Drake May's playing and when he's not. And they allowed 25 points. We was able to run the ball on them. We was able to throw the ball on them. We was able to run the ball on them. We was able to, throw the, we was able to do whatever we wanted on them. That was bad. Um... But, yeah, the teams are just able to do whatever they want on them, and their offense has not been good. So, I would say – and Sauce has not been good either. That, that I think there should be a conversation for that. I'm going to say they're mid. I'm going to say they're mid. Um, I don't think they deserve to be in this same conversation. The Chargers are just an elite off a defense. I would put Chargers as one of the – honestly, man, I think the Chargers may be the best defense in the league, man. I think it needs to be talked about. Now, I will say, the Chargers had one of their worst games of the season this week against the Bengals. Man, I would say this. They really dominated that first half defensively. But I will say this. In the fourth quarter, when it mattered most, and they needed to get a stop, not once, but twice, that defense stood up and got the job done. That is what was missing from this Chargers team with Justin Herbert at the helm all these years. All these teams, all these years, people saying, why can't Justin Herbert get the job done? The defense was one of the worst defenses every single year in the league. They finally got a good defense. This is a scary team. They're starting to build something on offense. The offense has been the, off the, the problem this year compared to the defense. Defense has got the job, job done week in, week out. Genuinely. So... Man, I, I, I'm going to just say, man, Chargers have been very good. Um, And when it comes to the Chargers, this week they may have another struggle game because they are playing one of the better offenses in the league. But for the most part, man, before this week, there was no game they allowed over 20 points. And if you want to say, even if you want to say allowed over 17, there was one game all season 
through 10 weeks, they allowed over 17 points. Now, you can talk about passing yards per game, rushing yards per game, but when it comes to not allowing the other team to score the football, to score points, that is up most importance. Now, in terms of the offense they played, you could argue that. I understand that. Now, we're going to see them get tested. They played the Bengals last week. They played the Ravens this week. They played the Falcons. Then they played the Chiefs. Now, they're going to play Tampa Bay with, what's the name back? Um, Tampa Bay with Mike Evans back. So, they're going to play a couple stretches of better offenses than they've really played. But I want to see, I, I, right now today, if I had to rank them, I think they've been the best defense so far this year. The Colts, I think the Colts is a team that really, honestly, I, is a team that I underrate. Um, It's just simple as that. When it comes to the Colts, I'm going to say... I think the Colts, the Colts have just been sneaky, honestly. I think the Colts have been sneaky, and they've been right here. I don't think the personnel is there, but I think they've been sneaky. Um, then the Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos, man. The Denver Broncos. Man, I'm telling y'all, man, the defense, the caliber of defense. Nah, we're bringing y'all down. I don't agree with it. 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 Actually, no, nah, just bring them there. I think these are the only teams that have really been elite. You could argue the Texans. You could argue the Texans, but yeah, I'll put them, I'll put them, I'll put them. But yeah, the Broncos, man, Broncos have been special. They've been the very, very, man, coming into the season, I really thought the Broncos was going to be bad defensively. Man, that's just a great, that's just, hey, hey, the scheme that they playing over there with the Broncos has just been fantastic, man. I don't know what to tell you. It's been fantastic, and if they offense can play the way they played this week against a, a solid, I ain't gonna lie, we're gonna have to talk about the Falcons defensively, by the way. I don't know if they're that good, but yeah, this is an elite defense. Yeah, they allowed 41 to the Ravens, I'm not gonna lie. Outside of that, they allowed 23 to the Chargers, 26 to the, to the Seahawks. Outside of those games, they've been very, very, very good. So, I'm gonna say... And if you think about what do the Ravens do, they they just don't you can't really pressure Lamar Jackson. But this is one of the best teams in the league at getting pressure. I will put them there. I will put them there. I think they've been a top three defense in the league this year. Then we got the Panthers. Panthers have been coming along better defensively the past couple of weeks. Now they have started to play a little bit worse defense offenses, so that kinda is what it is, you know. Um but that's not a good defense. Let's be honest here. That's not a good defense. If your team is going against the Panthers, you're you're hoping this is a a, a confidence build game for you. So I'm gonna have to say they're they're in this area, and I would put them here. Um, the Vikings. Vikings is another elite defense. I would personally put the Chiefs and the Bears above them. I think the Vikings are starting to get figured out a little bit on defense. Um. And I think their offense does give them a little bit more margin for error. But at the same time, their defense gives their offense a lot of margin for error. Looking at Sam Darnold and how he plays, to be real with you. Um, but I will say, the the Vikings is another team that gets a lot of pressure. Um, the best thing about the Vikings, though, ah, oh, man, see, that's the thing. There's no team that's really played the caliber of offenses that the Vikings have played and held them to what the Vikings have done. Now, I will say, though, Green Bay, 29 points. Detroit, 31 points. Rams, 28 points. So those do exist, but the, the 49ers, 17 points. But that do, that does look a little different in the light now because the 49ers have not been of the same caliber this year, especially when you think about they didn't have CMC then. Um, I, um, Houston, 7 points. That was a fully healthy Houston. So that's pretty crazy. I'm not going to lie. They had Diggs, Nico. They had all of them. All of them. And they pretty much shut that down. So I think right here is a good spot, though, because I think – it's been a little bit overstated how good they've played against some of the better offenses in the league. Um, 49ers, I think 49ers is a team that's a little bit overrated, in my opinion, defensively, if I had to be honest about it. Um, I think Fred Warner has been very good. Nick Bosa has been very good. But the defense could be a little bit better. I would probably say the 49ers have been playoff caliber. I'll probably put them there. 
The Eagles, now the Eagles. Eagles is another team that's been playing really well the past couple weeks. Um, ever since the bye week, you could genuinely argue this has been the best defense in the league. Genuinely. Um, very good performance against the Commanders. Very good performance against the Bengals. They've had some very good performances against some of the better offenses in the league. I'm going to put the the Eagles, because it's a full season thing, I'm going to put the Eagles behind the Vikings. They See, and that's what I'm saying. That's why I don't know if I want to put the Texans up there with them, because I don't know if they're on the caliber of these teams, in my opinion. Then we got the Steelers. This is another, for sure, elite team. They just put together one of the best defensive performances of the season out of any team this season. Um, I think that just needs to be stated. Um um, it just is what it is. 16 points to the Ravens is just amazing. And they haven't really, they've only allowed 20 points or more in a game twice this season. That was to the Commanders, who's been fantastic this year, and the Colts, who's been just a very inconsistent team, at, just all together. So I would say the Steelers are either one, two, or three. Um, if the Eagles keeps this up, the Eagles are going to be in that in that conversation with the Chargers of the world, the Broncos of the world, the Steelers. I probably put the Steelers here because when they played the same team, the Broncos allowed forty one, Steelers allowed sixteen. But you got to also think about it is a divisional opponent, just a little bit different, just kind of similar to like when the Broncos played the Chiefs divisional game it's not gonna go the same way it's not the same it's just not the same it's just not the same um seahawks kind of similar to how the um jets and the patriots too when they play just not the same um seahawks defensively i expected so much more out of the seahawks this year i'll be the first to say it um i don't really think it's a personnel thing though because I, when they've gotten healthy the last couple weeks they've looked better um they went right out their Apparently, they was without their three interior D linemen. That was the whole reason why I thought they was going to go up a level because I thought that secondary was going to be good, but it was really going to be that that three down defensive linemen for that system was going to be so fantastic. Now, they've been good the last two weeks, but they haven't really been getting sacks. So, I don't know what that is, but they did play two really good offenses in the 49ers and the Rams. Now, they play the Cardinals this week. I'm interested to see what that's going to look like. But, I'm going to say... I'm looking at the teams that put up points on them. Outside of the 42 to, to the Lions, 36 to the 49ers, the 31 to the Buffalo Bills, the only team that really put up points on them was the Giants of all teams. But I ain't going to lie. That week four, week five, Daniel Jones, he was playing pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That game he had against the Browns was very, very eye-opening for me. I thought he was going to be terrible against them. He was pretty solid against them, to be honest. So, yeah, but shout-out to Daniel Jones. He did just get benched this week, so... Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Seahawks are sneaky. I'm gonna put them here. I'm gonna put them here. Honestly, I'm gonna put them here. And then we got the Falcons. I'm gonna be honest. The Falcons may be sneaky in other way because they should be better than they are, and they have not been very good so far this year. So yeah, they put up. They gave up 38 to the Broncos. 30. I mean, they haven't really given up a lot of points outside that game. I thought they've been very, more inconsistent. So, yeah, they've been playoff caliber. They've been playoff caliber. I would put them here. They've been playoff caliber. Nah, they haven't been able. Their pass rush is awful. So, I'll probably bring them back. Their pass rush has actually been awful. But I'll put them about there. And then we got the Rams. The Rams, man, as a Patriots fan, we probably have the worst pass rush in the league. That pressure that them boys. I tried to tell people, Braden Fisk, Jarrett Verse. Those two was going to be very underrated. I had Jerry Versa above Lot 2. I don't know why a lot of people were trying to tell me Lot 2 was better than Versa. It just made no sense. Um, it's a guy with that speed that can that is a power rusher. When he can fall back on power, but when the power doesn't work, he still has the speed. When you pick up a speed guy, they don't have the power that Jerry Versa has. They cannot fall back on the power the way that Jerry Versa is going to have it. So Jerry Versa has been arguably the best defensive rookie this year. But uh, right beside him, Fisk has been very good as well. Um, Fisk had a play on Drake May that it was nothing he could have did on him. Now, Drake May was supposed to throw the ball, but the person did the wrong route. And it's just kind of something that happens when you have a bad offense with bad wide receivers, bad O-line. Um, wrong route, O-line gets beat, ends up happening to what it was. It's just what it is. And that's another thing with Drake May is 
he's going to be a guy that just turns the ball over. That was just his thing early on. But that decision-making wasn't – that really wasn't his fault, the decision-making there. He had to be able to protect the ball and not fumble, though. That is a thing that he has to do. But he did get smacked, though. It, it was a pretty crazy hit. But the Rams – I think the Rams' defense, if I'm honest – in compared to their offense, I would say that their defense has performed much better than their offense, in my opinion. Um, if you want to do it based off the simple fact of 20 points, okay. But if you think about the Rams as an elite offense, if you were to tell me the Rams only allowed 20, over 24 points twice all season, it was the first two games of the season for this young defense, I would have told you you were crazy if they had this record now i do think the rams is a team that could put it together to end the season um they do play philly this week but after that they play the saints but after that no they play a pretty interesting schedule because they play the philly they play the bills who's very hot right now the 49ers who's gonna need that win bad um the jets i don't know what's going on with the jets so that may be a win for them but then they play the cardinals then they play the seattle they they play a pretty interesting schedule to end the year so that's going to be a tough one to make the playoffs for the Rams. So y'all may be out of it. I'm not going to lie to you. But defensively, I would say that the Rams honestly been playoff caliber. And I'll put them here. And I'll put them here. Um, I think the pass rush has just been significantly better than a lot of these teams that would put above them. But yeah, that would be my team years. I think that the defense in the league has just been better than the offense in the league this year. It's just it what it is. Um, I think every team that I have in elite are just teams that just been elite when you're going against them you better come prepared playoff those are playoff caliber teams defensively sneaky like i said just not consistent but not bad not mid they're good but they're just not consistently good enough so i can put them in playoff and then we have the mid teams you could really argue the pages in sneaky to be honest because if they weren't injured they probably would be up there but i don't want to put them up there personally as a pages fan because i think that we got to be better as a defense personally um, but I will say, if I'm being unbiased, the bar I'm having for the Patriots is just so much lower than some of these other teams. Because, like, they gave up 28 to the Rams. That's a good offense. They gave up three points to the, like, they've only gave up, given up over 24 points twice all year. But if you're a Patriots team, you're not winning a lot of games. And they've only allowed over 23 four times all year. So, I don't know. I would say the Patriots, they need to be better than they've been. But that's just me. And I'm going to leave it there. That would be my tears. Um, if y'all do one more, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Without further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz. I'm about to be, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!